Hi and welcome back to Bike Speed. So this week we're going to sort out this cube mounting bike. We're going to do some drive train work, new chain, new front chain ring, new cassette on this one. We're going to do the lockout cable on the front forks and some little minor details along the way and the new tyre and just odds and ends. So do check this video out. There's a lot going on in this video just for a routine service. It just sort of shows the, the level that we go to. So you can see here, the chain is absolutely worn out. It's stretched beyond stretch. Now the issue with that, once you get a chain that goes beyond this like this, you wear out your big chain or your main your main usage chain ring, which in this case was the big chain ring. You wear out your cassette and you begin to wear out the entire drive train, where if you put a new chain on that, you would just have skipping. The chain would just skip over the worn out cogs that you've worn out through wearing your chain out too far. And that was the instance of this bike. So we're gonna replace this set i could tell which his favorite gear was on that cassette because the teeth were very very thin and worn from that worn chain it worn out actually two of the teeth on two of the rings were completely worn out you can sort of begin to develop a picture of, of the rider and, and the gearing they use and so on but we need to get this chain set off because the big chain ring here is, is worn out the teeth have sharped off they're beginning to curve back on themselves you can see the inner teeth there are barely worn at all but these top ones that I'm pointing to now have really pointed out and if I put a new chain on they would just skip over there there would be no you know it wouldn't be able to take the tension of a new chain it would just the chain would just skip straight over the top of those there'd be no grit so we need to replace that now we take off the derailleurs usually for a clean like this the front ones come off fine without any problem at all so we'll put that through the ultrasonic cleaner re-lubricate it re-grease it get that back on the bike but the rear one the tail of the cable here was so short if I cut it off there wouldn't have been enough tail to put a new end on and to get it out of the frame of the derailleur. So in this instance, I'm going to strip down this derailleur. I'm going to take out the jockey wheels. I'll clean those up on the bench. And then the rest of the derailleur, I'll actually clean up on the bike and re-lubricate on the bike. Another little thing we do with all servicing is to remove the brake pads, which is what I'm now doing. So we'll remove those. We'll clean up the braking surface. We'll re-lubricate the pivot point and get those back on the bike. And that will help with the braking. We'll also do the discs as well this front cable you can see here how that, that outer is absolutely corroded away on the ends it was actually both ends were corroded and a little piece in the center so we're going to replace this cable entirely the lockout shifter actuator for the lockout was it wasn't working at all so we're going to put a new cable on there also just take the top off of this just to clean that up again just through the ultrasonic cleaner just to make sure there's no debris stuck underneath that or stop it actuating if it then didn't actuate, I would have then gone deeper into the forks, but in this case, we didn't need to. So, you know, you, you can sometimes overthink things and do too much during the course of a service for just racks up the price unnecessarily. So these parts have now been through the ultrasonic cleaner. We're just going to give those a wash down. The degreaser we use is a water soluble degreaser. So what we're now doing is washing off all the, the residue of that degreasing process through the ultrasonic cleaner, just making sure everything is spick and span. So we've done the chain set, we've now got the front derailleur. So we just work that through one of our detailing brushes, clean up a few odds and ends, few nuts and bolts and things. There wasn't actually an awful lot on this bike needed cleaning up through the ultrasonic cleaner. But, you know, we sort of choose our parts according to the service we're doing and according to the bike. And you see all these little fittings, I just run them through. It's just good practice really, gets all the old grease and debris and everything else off. Pedals we don't put through the ultrasonic cleaner, but we do wash them down. I do do strip down pedals from time to time, but they're usually the high end ones because they're usually quite labor intensive and often on a, a more budget pedal, it's it's not actually cost effective to re in it. Sometimes it's cheaper just to replace that. But in this case, we wash those down. You can see this debris here. That's all come off the rear jockey wheels alone. And, you know, you're dragging that through your chain when you're doing your cycling. So we want to clean all those up and make them nice. We're using a brake cleaner on these. We don't use a degreaser because that will soak in through the seals. These have seal bearings. I also spray it around the edge of the jockey wheel itself. I don't spray it on the bearing itself so that we get a minimal amount of ingress of oil into those bearings. There's, there's no need to touch those. They have plenty of life in them. They didn't need re and they were spinning fine. So we just clean up the actual wheel itself rather than the bearing in the center on those jockey wheels. So now we've got a new chain ring on here. It's held on with four bolts, which we torque up because you can't get the torque wrench to those after this one's gone on. So we make sure they're torqued up. So we do those, a little bit of grease on those as well to stop those seasoning in the future. So as if it needs to come off again, it can be done without any problems. And again, we just torque those up because we've got it all set up and on the bench. So we may as well. Next up, we do the brake pads. The process for me with brake pads is to one, clean up 
all the debris that's on the pad as I'm doing there. Two to skim the pad, which is what I'm now doing. That just takes any of the little grooves that are forming on the pad or any oils or ingress that's in the pad. I'll just skim that off and make them as good as when they came out of the packet. They'll be a nice smooth brake pad. And then we actually sand down the actual disc itself, which will stop any squealing. But we've done that section there. So now we're on to where we clean down the frame. Again, it depends on what level of service as to what we actually do with this. This was a standard service. So this is a wash down and rebuild of the bike. So we're washing the frame down now. So we use a detailing brush in all the, the gritty areas that have a build up film. And then we wipe that off with a microfiber towel and the bike looks lovely afterwards. And um, we also wash it down here with the big softy. We use like some various brushes and nice soft bristles so we don't scratch the frames before we do wipe them off with a microfiber towel. If this was a stripped down detail service, at this point we would then tea cut polish and ceramic coat the bike and the bike would have actually been stripped down to more of a level than, than it even had for this routine service. Next up we're dealing with this brake disc. They get little grooves and little lines in them and it's very common for that to start the brake squealing. So we've done the pads, we're now going to do the disc. We use a little bit of emery cloth, we rub that disc down, get all those grooves out and that will just help stop some of the squealing that you get on your brakes. But you'll also see as we rebuild this bike, we did a little trick on the rear caliper which would have definitely of course this bike probably to have squealed and we just sort out a little problem on the rear caliper so it's just worth watching in a few minutes time. Now we're just cleaning up the hub, cleaning up the wheel. At this point I'm checking the spokes, feeling all the spokes, making sure there's no broken spokes, making sure the wheel is structurally sound and, and okay. So that's what I'm doing when I'm washing a wheel down. It's not just about cleaning the wheel up, it's about feeling and checking the wheel along the way as well, feeling the bearings, making sure everything's good to go for the duration of ride in between servicing. So on goes the new cassette, that's torqued up as well. Then we also just torque the little bolts on the disc, just check everything in the center there. And then on this case, the customer had asked us to replace the rear tire. This is a Maxxis tire. Now these tires are thick walled tires. They're a heavy old tire, these. But if you're off-roading, you're going to be going through some rough, gravelly, flinty ground, you know, rocky ground. These tires are great for that, these Maxxis tires, because they're, a, they're almost like a motorcycle tire. They're a very thick tire. But that does make them extremely hard to put on the bike. And I always wrestle with these. This is one of those where I do have to use the old tire levers and break a sweat out to get these back on and beaded in correctly. So we inflate the tire. With these ones, I actually minor over over inflate them initially to really bead them on the wheel, and then I release the pressure to go down to the correct pressure for the bike. And so I just inflated that, and now we're just rebuilding the bike as you can see. So the pedal arms go in, and I do torque those when I put those on the bike. Everything else as I'm doing a service, I'm putting together and doing pinch tight, just not torqued. That way I can undo things and just readjust them, get them right, all pinch tight, before I work through the bike with a torque wrench, which you'll see me doing shortly. So you can see here, just using an Allen key, just pinch tight, get everything just about right, check the adjustment on everything, and then we know we're fine before we start the torque wrench procedure of going through a bike. So this rear derailleur, I've washed and cleaned that all down. Now I'm just lubricating it. A little bit of Loctite to stop those jockey wheels coming undone on their pivot bolts. And then we can now get to the stage where we can begin to really build up the bike and get everything else on it, the new chain and so on. Brake pads go in, a little bit of grease on the back of those just to stop them sticking to the pistons and a little bit of grease on this pivot point because they're notorious for corroding into the caliper and having a job getting them out. So I always lubricate those. And in fact, when I get a new bike in, I'll always lubricate those, you know, on its very first service, even if I haven't replaced the pads or I'm doing something else, a little adjustment on a bike, I'll always grease those pivot points, even without telling a customer, because I know it will help my servicing in the future. Next up, we just get this cable on the front forks. And again, this was sort of something that I noticed when the bike came in, quoted the price, redone the cable, and you can see now that's actuating as it should. There was no need to go deeper into the forks because that was working absolutely perfectly. So that was all good news for, for the customer there. New grips, which again were requested. So we're giving this bike its routine service and just a little bit of a freshen up on some of the details really. So on goes the chain. And before we adjust it, we just flick the clutch on there to the on position because that, the off position is purely for your servicing. So once the bike is riding, you need that on your on position on the clutch on the actual derailleur itself. So we've just flicked that up and we're just doing the adjustments and everything's fine. Front brake working fine. 
But as I mentioned, the rear had a little problem. You see that disc moving to a turn from the finger. That disc is actually moving because the caliper is not centralized on the disc. So every time you pull the brakes, it's pulling the disc. That will induce squealing. So we just loosen those off, spin the wheel, brake it, check it again. You can see no movement there at all now. And the wheel is free in that caliper, spinning nicely, braking smoothly and absolutely perfect. Again, we're all about details. I wouldn't personally have put this tie wrap on these cables, but the customer had, but it was a white one. That to me doesn't fit the bike. So I'm just swapping that out for a black one. We'll also just cut that off with a knife. So there's no end on there because there was a little sharp end on the old tail of the tie wrap itself. So it's again, just little details like that. I'm just always smoothing and sorting out. Again, the logo on that cap there, the bearing cap wasn't lined up with the stem. So I just undid that and lined that up as well. Just little details like that. I, I always think when I look down on a bike, I want everything to be nothing to catch my eyes wrong. So that's what we're doing there. Now you can see here a couple of the pivots were actually loose when we talk those up. They're all the things that when servicing the bike, just tighten it all up, make it feel like new again, less rattles, less movement, just tightens everything up nicely. So that's why we go through everything with the torque wrench. And you can see even these old bottle cages there, the old bolts that aren't being used were loose. They were drone in that frame. So again, just pinching those up, just stops some of that noise and just tightens the bike up nicely after a service. Things like the valve cap here, one on the back but not on the front one was missing so we just replace that and then one of the final stages is just to check the airs so the air in the forks was actually around about where i would have expected it to be but on this center shock here it was a little bit low so i just reinflated that just gave that a little bit more air a little bit more pressure in the center there more to, to the spec of the bike or where it should be and you can see what a difference we've made to this bike with just a routine service it's just going to ride tauter tighter have a smoother gear change good tires and be absolutely ready to go for its next off-road adventure so check these before and afters out thanks for watching do hit the subscribe button below and we will see you again next week when i'm sure we'll have another bike for you we'll see you again so safe riding bye for now